In this session, I'd like to talk about how to screen for bargains in the market. And I'm going to use the database that I have access to, S&P Capital IQ, to illustrate the process of screening. Now you think, what's, what is screening? When you screen for stocks, what you're looking for are bargains. So when you're looking to create a screening mechanism, the first question you need to answer is, do you think markets make mistakes? And if you say the answer to that is no, then why bother? There's no point screening because there are no bargains. Every stock is in a sense fairly bad. But if you tell me markets make mistakes, I'm going to push further. I'm going to ask you to describe the kinds of mistakes you think markets make. Let's suppose that you believe markets overreact to information, to news. Well, if that's the mistake you think markets make, then I'm going to try to come up with characteristics of companies that I think will be misvalued by the market. Like what? Well, if markets overreact to news, then I'm going to look for stocks that have dropped a lot in the last six months because the stocks that have dropped the most are the ones where you're most likely to see mistakes, where the, stock, where the market has overreacted, pushed the price down too much. The process starts by identifying mistakes, converting those mistakes into characteristics that you think misvalued companies have. We have to go further though. Once you've specified those characteristics, you have to come up with the observable criteria that you can use to screen for those companies. The example that I just used, if you believe that markets overreact and you're looking for stocks that have dropped the most, you then have to get more specific. Drop the most over what period? The last week, the last month, and by how much? 30%, 40%, 50%. And remember, you get a chance to revisit these numbers if you overreach, but basically you've got to convert the characters into observable criteria. Why observable? Because you want to screen for something, it's got to be something that you can observe. And you have to find a database with data on those observable criteria. And then you run your screens and you're going to come up with companies that pass your screens. Now, when you run these screens, you might end up with too many companies coming through sometimes. So, so you might want to look for only 20 stocks, but your screens might give you 150. You know what you need to do? You need to go back and either tighten the screens or add more criteria to reduce the number of companies coming through. If you have too few firms coming through, then you might have to revisit the criteria and loosen the criteria. So if your original criteria was, I'm going to look for stocks that have dropped more than 50%, you might have to make it you know, more than 30%, have more stocks come through. Loosen criteria or remove criteria. That is the process of screening. So you ready? Let's do, let's, let, let's get started. Now, before you start applying screens on these big databases, there are a couple of things I want you to think about. Many of these databases have publicly traded companies across the world. S&P Capital IQ, for instance, lists all publicly traded stocks everywhere in the world. And I might decide that I don't want to look for stocks everywhere. I might decide that stocks listed in emerging markets, I'm not going to be able to trade on. I don't want them. It's a choice, but one of the things you need to think about when you're screening is, do you want to screen for all stocks or just a subset of stocks based on geography? The second thing to think about is market cap. S&P Capital IQ has more than 60,000 companies public that are listed on the database, and their market caps range from less than a million to more than two trillion. You might decide to screen out companies based on market cap. Why? You might, for instance, in your philosophy, believe that market mistakes are more likely at companies that are not too large. So you might screen out companies whose market caps exceed 100 billion or 500 billion. Or you might decide that companies that are too small, you don't trust those numbers. And you might screen out for companies with market caps of less than a million, less than 10 million, or even less than 100 million. And finally, you've got to think about liquidity. After all, this is all about making money. And when you want to go trade on these stocks, the transactions cost matter. So you might decide to trade or screen for stocks that have a minimum amount of liquidity, either based on trading volume or some proxy for liquidity. What do I mean by that? You might decide not to use small companies simply because they're illiquid or not to use stocks where institutions are not big investors because they're not liquid. So with that set up, let's try a very simple screen. Let's suppose your investment philosophy is built around investing in U.S. companies. You're a U.S. investor and you believe that you want to stay domestic. You want to invest in companies that are liquid enough that you don't get hit with a huge transactions cost, that are cheap, have seen earnings grow for the last five years and have very little debt. Already you can see why that, that philosophy is fairly well stated. To convert this into screens, I have to start to get specific. The US companies eat, but 
When I talk about liquid, how am I going to measure liquidity? What is the minimum liquidity I need? What about cheapness? How do I measure cheapness? Do I look at price earnings ratios or price to book ratios, or EV to EBITDA? What about earnings growth? Growth in operating income, net income, earnings per share. And finally, when I say very little debt, very little debt relative to what? To total capital, to EBITDA. So when you come up with an investment philosophy, you have to start to think about specific criteria. Now, as you think about that criteria, it's always good to open up your database. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open up my S&P Capital IQ database. We're going to take S&P Capital IQ for a ride to try to screen for those companies based on your philosophy. So when you open the data, when you use open S&P Capital IQ, this is what the page will look like. Here's what you're going to start with for screening. Obviously, and it's, it's easy to find. Click screening and click company screening. And here's what the page will look like. Take a look at this page. This is all of the data that is available on your company that you could potentially screen for. And you can see it's not just financial data. It's ownership data, insider data. It's, it's an incredibly rich database. But I don't want to get lost there. I want to screen for companies. Now, before you get started on these screens, one thing I would strongly recommend if you're an investor looking at stocks is because S&P Capital IQ also has data on private companies, I would start the screening by looking for only public companies. Notice that spinning wheel? When it comes back, it tells you how many companies S&P Capital IQ found based on that first screen. 66,201 companies. Second, remember your investment philosophy, you wanted to invest just in US companies. I'm going to add that screen on to see what it does to my universe. So now I'm looking for public companies just in the US and I get 17,885. Next, you wanted cheap companies, right? And now I have to get specific about what I mean by cheapness. So I clicked on multiples and if you look under valuation in CIQ multiples, it gives you trailing multiples and forward multiples. Trailing multiples are computed using the trailing numbers, the, from the data, the earnings, the book value from the last 12 months. Forward multiples are based on expected numbers for the next one. Now, I don't have any strong priors here, but I'm going to start with trailing multiples and I'm going to use price to earnings as my measure of cheapness. Remember, cheapness means you want to trade at low P, so I'm going to trade change the greater than to less than. And I'm going to enter a number. Now, initially, when you start doing this, you're going to say, how do I know what number to enter? Hey, just enter any number. Let's suppose I entered 200, which is an absurdly high number. You know what I'm going to find? Most of, you know, I'm getting too many companies. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this less than 10. And remember, you always have a chance to come back and edit the screen. And I end up with 816 companies coming through. So I have 816 publicly traded companies in the U.S. that trade at less than 10 times earnings. Next up, I'm going to close up. I'm going to look for growth rates. Remember, one of the things you had as criteria is you wanted companies whose earnings had grown at least 10, I mean, or grown over the last five years. So I'm going to click on growth rates and I'm going to look for growth rates over the last five years and I have to start to get specific. In what sense? Well, I could use EBITDA, EBIT, but here I'm going to use net income as my measure of earnings and I'm going to look for growth rates greater than 10% and I'm going to add that on. So now I'm piling the criteria on top of other criteria. The 222 companies that came through here are companies that have PE ratios less than 10 and have grown their earnings more than 10% a year for the last five years. I'm almost there. I'm going to close up my growth rate section and open up my leverage section. Why? Because I want companies with very little debt. And here again, I have to decide how to measure debt. Let's assume I decide to use long um, total debt as a percentage of capital. I want this number to be less than how about 20%. All the numbers in capital IQ are already in percent, so I put less than 20. And let's see what I can get through. So these are companies now with net income having grown more than 10% a year for the last five years and have debt of less than 20% of total capital. Now one final screen that I'm gonna add on is I wanna make sure my companies are liquid. Now, Capital IQ actually has trading volume data. 
but that date is a little tough to use. So I'm going to use a proxy. I'm going to say only companies with a market cap greater than 100 million are in my screen because I'm worried about really small companies being illiquid. So I add that criteria on and let's see what that does to my sample. I get 10 companies. Let's see what the companies look like. I'm curious. I haven't run these screens before. So remember, these 10 companies share the following characteristics. One, they trade at less than 10 times earnings. Two, their earnings have grown. Net income has grown more than 5% a year for the last five years. Three, they have very low debt ratios, all below 20%. And four, their market caps greater than 100 million. Now, there are some people who once they get these screens will go buy all these companies saying they're cheap. I'm not in that crowd. Here's what I would do next. I would take each of these companies and I would check the most recent news stories. In fact, since you're an S&P Capital IQ, you could do it right here. Let's take BioRad Labs. Let's see what it looks like. If you click on that, you can actually see the information on the company. You can see re 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 recent news stories if you want, but you can also get the data on the company going back in time. It describes the company, provides historical data. I view screening as the first step in investing, not the last step. Those 10 companies will now go into a deeper analysis. In fact, I'm a great believer in intrinsic valuation. I will value each of those 10 companies. You don't have to buy into that. But screening is a great way to reduce, your, to, to reduce the number of companies you're looking at so you can be more focused on them. So again, let's review. Screening always starts with a belief about market mistakes, which get converted into characteristics and criteria. Those criteria you put into a big database like S&P Capital IQ or FactSet or Reuters can be used to screen the database to find companies that meet all those criteria. If you get too many companies coming through at the end, go back and change the screen. So for instance, if I'd got 80 companies coming through and I said, I don't want 80, I'd have gone back and changed the P ratio from 10 to 8. That means that fewer companies would come through. Decide which criteria you want to change and you can loosen them or tighten them to make your, your analysis different. One final point, if uh, you get 10 companies coming through and eight of them are oil companies, something to think about, that there's something in your screens that's leading you towards oil companies. So you might want to consider adding a screen or removing oil companies altogether to see what comes through. So it's a process of trial and error once you do it, but it's in a sense fun to see it play out because you have access to this database and this incredibly powerful screening tool. I hope you found this session useful and I hope you get a chance to screen for whatever criteria you think make for a cheap stock. Take care.